Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of the attendees. I'm uh, Mrs. Alexandra Duval. I'm the VP Marketing and Communication from Peter Surgical in charge of education. Today, Peter Surgical is pleased to help to facilitate a new webinar um, from uh, Peter's Academy. Peter's Academy was born this year considering how Peter's Surgican can help surgery, surgical community to better exchange and learn about uh, local challenge and expertise from all over the world. Today, this Friday, we are honored uh, to welcome for the webinar dedicated on the application of artificial valves in right ventricular outflow track and its reconstruction. We are honored to welcome Professor Su John Wu, who is Deputy Director of Surgery by Beijing Children's Cardiovascular Disease Centers in China, and also Dr. Stefano Marianeski, the Chief of the Pediatric and Congenital Cardiac Surgery in the hospital of Niguarda in Milan, in Italy. Before I leave the floor to these two gentlemen, Professor Su will be the moderator and there will be both speakers. Before I leave the floor, let me give you additional information. And, um, sorry, I have just an issue. Yeah. The webinar will be organized as follows. The first part will be handled by Professor Su. He will share his uh, experience about the history and perspective in China. And after his presentation, there will be a dedicated time for the question and answer. On the second part, Dr. Marianeski will explain the experience in Europe and the advanced technique. Once again, there will be a dedicated time for question and answer. few elements in terms of organization. This webinar is international and is in English. You are all in mute. And if you want to ask some question, you can use the section which is dedicated for that, the question section. We'll collect all, all of your question and we will uh, answer in, during the dedicated time. This webinar will be registered and you can have the, uh, the webinar in replay just after uh, this, uh, this time. So I will thanks again our speakers for their contribution in uh, the name of Peter Surgical. And I will leave the place for Professor Su who will start this webinar. Okay, sure, sure. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and good evening. Because uh, we have because we have some time difference uh, from all over the world. I'm very glad to introduce our experience for the. Uh, for the application of uh, biomaterial valve conduct uh, we know uh, the yes we know uh, the right uh, ventricle to pulmonary artery conduct is an important method to construct the right ventricle outflow in many complex uh, congenital heart diseases like uh, pulmonary atresia, trunk, QF, and many, many very uh, complex uh, congenital heart diseases. But the material very, diff very different, like uh, 
allergenic warm conduct, heterogeneous warm conduct, PDFE conduct, stateless warm conduct, like bowen pericardium. We know the home graph is very, very nice. He has good hemodynamic close to physiology state, but uh, it still must be in deep cryogenic preservation with liquid nitrogen. So it's uh, maybe some difficult. And also his this advantage is limited source, difficult to much size. Also in this time in China, there is no homograph because all the donation, the heart was for the heart transplantation, not for homograph for congenital heart disease. Heterox grafts, has uh, had a disadvantage per manager clarification and uh, function failure, and also penis formation, especially more significant in young patients for the limited time to use. Now, the bowen jugular vein for the pulmonary valve conduct had many, many advantages, like extensive resources, cost effective, biological material with material valve structure, and uh, biomechanical adaptability is close to the low pressure environment of the right heart system, and also is uh, low immune, immune rejection and low side toxicity. And also it has a sufficient length and uh, soft texture for easy stitching. In China, we, we usually use the bowen pericardium and the bowen jugular in our met in our center, in our single center from November 2008 and uh, this year July, there are 73 patients to use this uh, material. The data is uh, in the age, weight, diagnosis, surgical, and also and so on. The total 73 is this is the size from in the medium is much more. The diagnosis more than half is pulmonary atresia and other kind of disease. All the patients perform the surgical procedure. The thirty-seven radically surgery and uh, another 36 use the staging surgery after BT clean collaboration and the UF also. All the patients, the age weight eight and or some more. Follow up three years, three months, and uh, one year, but uh, we lost some patients for the three years, 13% and 28% uh, for one year. The flow rate of the primary is fine, and the price difference between the primary artery and the also fine. The Palmer valve reflex only severe, only 2%. And uh, some post-operation complications 
like a delay the chest closure and pericardial effusion, pleural effusion, and the low cardiac outcome syndrome three differently. And also some lung perfusion injury, pericardial dialysis, and uh, some like this. But we have higher uh, mortality. There are six cases that in hospital and the two cases out of the hospital. The hospital death, like one day, one day, one, one day, one day, is the early in our um, center. Maybe they are the trunk. Uh, is to suffer the pulmonary hypertension crisis. At that time, we have no some method to prevent this. But now we have the AO and uh, many, 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 many medicine to prevent the pulmonary hypertension crisis. So this thing may be fine. But also there are nine cases re-intervention of the surgery. There are six for the replace contact from, from the recently is uh, four years, no, four years and uh, months balloon dilation and uh, many other <coughs> from six, the, the long time 13 to replacement uh, conduct. So we can discuss discussion for this patient and uh, uh, we review some paper. The first, uh, the Dr. Corey Stoffer Sweden, from Sweden. He concluded almost the uh, or almost the six hundred patients. The six hundred patients QF makes the CAT plus and the age of the the age of the first of the count. Contact implantation is proportional to the post-operation mortality. The re-intervention free survival within 20 years, about half. And the gender and the degree of malformation are corrected with the reduction in survival dual reading re-intervention free. This is the three disease of the five, 10, 50, and 20 survival. The results are very nice. But re-intervention free survival for the 20 years only 54%. So he said the patients after the first intervention needed to re-intervention for a significantly short time than patient with the first time. The first, the first contact impression is fine. And the, after the first intervention is lower. And the second is Dr. Mary in the United States from, from 1995 to 2014, almost 20 years, almost the eight cases. They used the patient's right ventricle to primary 
with the conduct placement. Uh, one of the other primary home graft and uh, 31 bowen jugular graft, another 17 person hetero graft and uh, 15 percent aortic graft. But uh, the total patients, uh, there are 40 percent to replacement. The main diagnosis, palmar atresia with the ACD and the trunks. And also the valve of the contact include primary home graft, bowen, jugular, porcelain, hytograph grafts. This is the detail, the overall 19... 792. The result is Bowen jugular graphs are associated with the significantly greater risk of later in the cartis. It's also like uh, our appearance. And the Bowen And the boy with a significant greater risk of liter in the cartilage compared to the aortic home graft and the oral. This is the detailed picture. The third paper from Japanese, Japan, Dr. Yashu. He reported 13 small children from eight to 17 months and five kilogram. All the patients from the youngest only four days, the largest four years. He reported a uh, trunks arterial four months child with uh, 10 millimeter kangaroo graft and uh, three months later, the palmar artery 25 MAD contacts, but the contact stenosis and uh, regurgitation replacement with uh, 10 PDF. He find in the, in this patient, uh, he find uh, significant new in terminal prolifer proliferation for, for the conduct. So he said more than mild primary habitation and the low body weight at the operation of less than three, three kilogram could cause early conduct dysfunction. And also by cuspidization of the contact to downsize its diame diameter or small children may result in early conduct failure and reinforced of contact with the ring may have a risk of the compression of a coronary artery. The fourth, the doc, United States uh, Dr. Patio. He concluded the Bowen jangular vein conduct. He gave us a middle to long in institution review. He separated uh, across the age, separated three groups. One, more smaller than one year. Group two, one to 10 years. And the three, beyond the 10 years. 
this is the our patients, group one, group two. And uh, also the size from 12 to 22, <coughs> mean size 13 in group two, and uh, group, two, group two, 17, and uh, the big ball, big kids, uh, 21. The early mortality group one, also the small one, very high. And then group two or group three, very few. And the late mortality, also the group one, is higher. And the group two or group three is fewer. So he tell us the bowen jugular vein conduct is useful option for the right ventricle outflow tract reconstruction. Give its easy implantability and acceptable minimum durability. This patient with <coughs> 14 years ago, the DRIV with the aortic uh, home graph implant in 2008, uh, 2005 years, 14, 14 years later, it, last year, for the stenosis for the conduct. So I replacement uh, 20, 24 uh, per cardiac contact tissue. We find that this, this valve calculation very, very hard. We didn't use the scissors to cut this. Sometimes when I open the chest from this broken for the right ventricle muscle. These are all our patients here. Especially introduce uh, this year, we did uh, this 14 boy. He suffered from pulmonary atresia with the VSD and the PDA. At uh, 11 months, we used the 12 bowen jugular graft for the treatment. But five years later, he suffered from bacteria and the tachys and the conduct failure. So at that time, we changed. We replacement with 20 bowen jugular graft and plus by direct, by direct glee procedure this year. The graft also stenosis, and uh, the right of the right heart failure. So he couldn't uh, move, stay in chair. His father moved our hospital. We did the third uh, replacement with also with. Uh, 20 bowen jugular and also for the procedure TVP. Now he's fine and uh, goes back to school now. So the com complication congenital heart disease, right ventricle, ventricular outflow reconstruction surgery required bowen jugular vein or bowen pericardial worm contact. It is safe and uh, feasible. The valve bowen pericardial contact is used for reconstruction of right ventricle outflow and the medium term effect is sensitive battery. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Thank you very much.
Thank you, Dr. Yes. Su. Yeah. I appreciate your um, um, communication. Congratulations for your experience uh, in this field. I, I have a, uh, may I start with a question? No? Uh, I, w I would like a question for you. I would like to, a question for you. Uh, as you show in the literature, the, the endocarditis is pretty frequent in uh, bovine jugular vein conduit. Uh, also of this problem, did you note, especially in the patient with uh, small pulmonary arteries, or with pulmonary hypertension, also a dilatation, abnormal dilatation of this conduit because the bovine jugular vein is very thin. So uh, especially in the patient with pulmonary hypertension sometimes become uh, like a balloon, become bigger and uh, prone to dilatation. Did you have this problem in your, uh, in your cases? Thank you. It's a good question. Uh, in, in, our, in our center, we use the uh, we use the material just for the company. They use some tissue, close the conduct. So they couldn't uh, expand. Sometimes we usually use the size plus one or two uh, centimeter for this. And uh, also I show you the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, this material, they send some material outside. So we will use this. They will never enlarge for the later, but sometimes they will be stenosis. So uh, we did some, in, in this group, there are six patients, Replacement for uh, for for this conduct because of the stenosis, but not uh, enlarge. Sometimes balloon for the recently we can some balloon just for the sometimes uh, stenosis. And now just a curiosity. Uh, in your casistic, there are uh, four uh, transposition of the gut arteries. Um, w why you implanted the conduit uh, in, in this kind of patient? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I saw your casistic, no, of the conduit. And yeah. uh, I, I, in this casistic, there are four patients with TGA, transposition of great arteries. So do you put a conduit on the right ventricular flow tract there? Yeah. In China, all in, uh, all, only PDF and this conduct, no any other contractor in China, uh, the government uh, mm -hmm. illegal. You use the outside the uh, newborn and any other things. Only two kind of. Sometimes small cases we use the PDF conduct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rasu. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Su, as well. Uh, from the field, we have a different kind of question. I will try to sum up 
two, two kinds of question. Uh, the first uh, is the question regarding uh, um, if uh, uh, some surgeon will have, have to, is there any uh, fellowship available or practical training to implement uh, such materials? Uh, the uh, one question from uh, Dr. Lamar Mohamed from Algeria, who is uh, interesting to learn more about the reconstruction of the RVOT obstruction. Yeah, we are welcome. Every co Collegram to our group, to our center, to practice the this kind of surgical procedure. Thank you. And another question on the on the suture itself. When the, uh, you suture the pipeline, uh, are there any suturing technique to prevent bleeding? Yeah. So, thanks for the for the Peter and for the some other company. They provide a good line, and uh, so in this year I worked uh, uh, more than thirty years. The early sometimes bleeding, but now the good, the very very nice needle. So. We suit very, very, we very, very, yeah, very, very satisfactory for this, uh, no bleeding for this. Okay, thank you. No more question from my side. Uh, Mark, do you have some other question or can we move to the second part? No? Okay, thank you. So, uh, Dr. Mineski, uh, we propose you to, to continue on the second part. Sure. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you to Peter Academy to invite me in this uh, interesting uh, meeting. Uh, it is uh, strange that uh, we're talking with uh, in this way, but uh, now we are uh, used to do that. And uh, I hope we can uh, share again our experience uh, directly in, a, in, a, in, a, in the regular meeting uh, like uh, usual. So, I will talk about uh, uh, the reconstruction of the right ventricular flow tract, uh, like uh, Dr. Su already talking about, uh, especially focusing my attention on the tetralogy of law and the reconstruction of the, the right ventricular flow tract and the tetralogy of law. Uh, Uh, like like uh, uh, anyone knows, uh, the natural history of tetralogy of law is is very poor. So for this reason, uh, um, the, the the surgical uh, uh, is uh, mandatory for uh, any patient with tetralogy of law. In fact, uh, uh, the surgical history of the tetralogy of law is pretty good. In uh, 50 years after the operation. Uh, 80, 85 percent of the patients are still alive. But if we looking to the freedom from the reoperation, uh, we see that uh, after 12, uh, 20 years of the repair, the curve st uh, start to decrease and decrease uh, very rapidly. Does mean that uh, uh, after 15. Uh, uh, of the transannular patch, uh, that is the usual correction uh, of the majority of the tetralogy of law, uh, this patient uh, need uh, a reoperation. The, the 
Cause of reoperation uh, in the tetralogy of a law are uh, mainly three. Uh, the reoperation for residual BSD, for uh, pulmonary stenosis, ma the main operation in the tetralogy of a law after 15, 20 years uh, of the repair is the pulmonary regurgitation. If we see this slide uh, gently given me by Dr. Giamberti, uh, you, you can see that uh, if we divide the era starting from 1990 to 2000, we see that in the first era, era the, the pulmonary valve uh, repair uh, for uh, regurgitation, the tetralogy of law, were only the 1%. In the era two, so starting from 94 to 1998, the, the uh, pulmonary valve regurgitation increased to 6%. And uh, in the 2000 era, the pulmonary valve repair for regurgitation uh, increasing again to more than 20%. So the role of the pulmonary valve implantation uh, become uh, important. And uh, about that, there is uh, a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, bibliography and uh, publication uh, on, uh, on this topic, because we have to decide when it's better to start to change this valve. And uh, for this reason, uh, there is a, a difficult selection of this patient uh, to decide what is the best moment to replace the valve. The pulmonary regurgitation is a vicious mechanism that starts from uh, um, the regurgitation that uh, uh, creates a chronic uh, right ventricle volume uh, overload and then RV dilatation. So uh, this increases the wall stress, the wall stress and uh, the ratio between uh, right ventricular mass and the volume ratio. So this causes again a right ventricle dysfunction. And this is complicated also from the right ventricular flow patch, from the ischemia that we create with the repair of the tetralogy of flow in that area. And uh, this uh, can create also a right ventricle aneurysm with the kinesia of this part of the heart. And this contributes to, to right ventricular dysfunction. So, uh, with the time, uh, the pulmonary regurgitation become a serious problem for this patient. And uh, what is the index that uh, we have to look uh, to decide when uh, we have to change and uh, replace uh, um, this valve? Um, some uh, uh, publication focus the attention on the indexed right ventricle and systolic volume. Some um, and, and a correlate of force right ventricle rejection fraction, and uh, there are other public uh, other um, uh, publication that uh, focus the attention on the right ventricle and diastolic volume and the ejection fraction. Uh, in our experience, uh, all the patients with the tetralogy of a law. Um, follow this uh, this program. Uh, of course, uh, echocardiography, um, and then uh, I will put a second the magnetic resonance imaging, then cardiac catheterization, and then the flow velocity through the right ventricular flow tract with tissue Doppler imaging, and uh, the function of the right ventricle with the strain rate. And uh, we have to look also. Uh, to the condition of this patient. And uh, if we're looking to uh, several uh, literature about that, uh, um, we can uh, uh, check the progressive dilatation of the right ventricle by echo. Uh, if uh, compare arrhythmias, uh, if the patient uh, start uh, have a failure to thrive, if have symptoms like a syncope, um, the grade of the tricuspidal regurgitation, uh, the increasing uh, of the dimension of the heart, uh, and um, the, the regurgitation of the, um, the, the sorry, the, the dilatation, uh, progressive dilatation of the heart by magnetic resonance, 
and also in the EKG, if the QRS uh, is more than uh, 180 milliseconds. Uh, I just show this uh, slide to you. This is an important uh, um, study published on the annual thoracic uh, uh, surgery in 2007 that focused the tension on the right ventricular and diastolic volume in the excel. Now we look in just this, uh, this parameter to, to, to give the indication for surgery. Uh, in any case, in our uh, center, we're looking at to these factors, uh, like uh, factors to give indication for surgery. Symptoms, of course, if the, pa the patient is uh, symptomatic. If the patient has severe uh, pulmonary valve regurgitation at uh, magnetic resonance, more than 35%. And uh, the, uh, um, the right ventricle dilatation uh, with uh, uh, the indexed uh, right ventricle volume, that must be more than 140 milliliter uh, per square meter. And the ratio between the systolic pressure of the right ventricle, that must be uh, more than two thirds of the systemic pressure. If the patient have a, a max consum consumption of oxygen less than 65% predicted. And now uh, that uh, we, have, we, we have the indication for the repair of the, for the substitution of this valve, we have to decide which is the ideal valve for pulmonary valve re repair. Uh, the Ideal valve uh, must, must be available on the shelf, must be uh, long lasting, of course, every surgeon, every surgeon looking for that, must be easy to implant, of course, easy to, to make the reoperation if need the reoperation. And uh, uh, this is probably in the future, if this, there, is, there is a potential growth of the valve with the, uh, with the increasing of the age of the patient. Dr. Su already shows which kind of valve we can put on the right ventricular flow tract, starting from the conduit and from stented or not stented biological valve, freestyle valve, homograft, and also mechanical. Starting from mechanical is strange because nobody can think that a mechanical valve can be put on the right ventricular arthrotract. But there is an article uh, by Italian doctors in the journal thoracic cardiovascular surgery that suggests the mechanical valve uh, in the right ventricular arthrotract, patient in patient with dialysis. Uh, why dialysis? Because this patient, uh, if we put a, a biological valve, this valve uh, is not uh, uh, lasting uh, too much because the patient in the analysis have a very, very um, early, early calcification and dysfunction of the biological, of the biological valve. And also this valve is uh, very available uh, on the shelf in, uh, in any uh, surgical theater. Uh, but we have, we have a lot of disadvantage. Uh, the mechanical valve uh, is prone to thrombosis, especially in the low pressure uh, system like uh, the pulmonary uh, circulation can cause embolic uh, events and uh, also hemorrhagic events for the coagulation uh, that the patient must be um, uh, done. And uh, 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 this valve uh, is uh, impossible to uh, to repair or to um, uh, fix it with a, a transcatheter option. And now we're looking for the homograft. The, the homographs uh, uh, are very, very good valves uh, with the freedom of valve degeneration, especially with the, the first implant at, uh, here there are some different literature about that. 
uh, that uh, oscillating between 50 per 35 percent and 70 percent at uh, five years uh, after the implant and uh, also the freedom of reoperation is pretty good but it is not perfect between 40 and 80 percent after uh, 10 years depend of the the different literature we, we can look for. Uh, what, what are the advantages of the homograft? Easy to implant, it's very easy to implant because it's, it's a natural tissue, good durability in a short medium time, and no needs anticoagulation. Disadvantage, the homograft is uh, like a live uh, tissue, so the, uh, have a very strong immune response with the calcification uh, uh, of the valve and calcification of the of the conduit itself as soft so can be compressed by external structure and uh, uh, like uh, we, we, we like dr su said uh, in china there is a limited availability of this uh, of this type of conduit. The biological valve uh, looks uh, probably uh, the, the better valves we can, uh, we can put in a pulmonary position. Freedom for operation is pretty good at 10 years and uh, have a lot of advantages like durability that uh, for some valve at least 10 years uh, uh, is good. We have availability of the shelf uh, in any uh, surgical theater. It is pretty easy to implant. Uh, no anticoagulation needed, uh, at least uh, the first three months, and then uh, doesn't need any coagulation more. And uh, less risk of external compression because they have uh, a stent around, so are uh, pretty um, defense by the external compression. Uh, the disadvantage of the biological valve uh, is the loss of perform performance. When they start to lose performance, they, they start uh, very, and then they quickly they, they lost uh, completely. So when they start, we have to just thinking to replace. And uh, one of the loss of the performance is the stenosis, but there is also the recurgitation. And not all these valves are candidate for uh, transcatheter uh, valve in the valve implants. And uh, we'll see later what does mean. And uh, we have other option about that. Uh, we're talking about homograft, uh, about uh, biological valve, mechanical. Yes, we have other option. And the uh, one is uh, the percutaneous replacement of the pulmonary valve. And this is the first article wrote by Philippe Bonhoeffer in circulation in 2000 that start in a new, a new era regarding, uh, regarding uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, type of reconstruction. And uh, the first valve, uh, in the in the market for uh, this kind of repair was the melody valve the melody valve is a biology is a bovine jugular vein conduit uh, like uh, the one that uh, shows dr su in uh, his presentation inside uh, an expandable stent um, this stent uh, need to be crimped before and then uh, um, expanded with a balloon inside Sometimes I need a, a, a pre-stent uh, uh, pre uh, system uh, uh, in the pulmonary artery to, to, to permit uh, um, a landing of the valve uh, very smooth. And, um, and uh, this valve is, is the first, was the first valve uh, that uh, uh, in the market for this kind of uh, replacement. Another valve that we can put in a, in a pulmonary position is the Eduard Sapiens valve. It's a valve very short, the smallest is 14.3 millimeter, and uh, it's a valve with a stainless steel stent, so very solid and rigid stent that uh, uh, sometimes is, is good for the calcific annulus of the 
of the previous uh, pulmonary artery uh, aflow tract because the stent is very uh, is very rigid. And also the Edward Sapiens valve is a valve that can be inserted inside a biological, like uh, this example of the valve in valve procedure. So if the biological valve doesn't work uh, uh, after uh, several years, we can, uh, with the transcatheter uh, method, we can uh, uh, expand an Edwards valve inside the, um, the previous biological one. But despite the, the transcutaneous method that looks uh, the, the best one, the stab surgical implant is still today the most frequent reoperation. And why this? because the percutaneous valve are limited indication. And the limitation are this. One is the size of the pulmonary valve. Uh, the melody and the, the, the sapiens are valves that, uh, that are uh, of determinate size, uh, uh, between uh, uh, 20 and uh, 25 millimeter, no more, no, no bigger than this or smaller than this. Also, the jug jugular bovine vein uh, is not, uh, there is not in the nature a bovine jugular vein bigger than 26, 27. So it's very rare to find a bovine, bovine jugular vein bigger of bigger size. And uh, also it's important the morphology of the right ventricular aflow tract, if there are calcification or calcification if there is a lack of a rigid support in the, in the right ventricular flow tract, and also if we have to treat associated cardiac malformation like a tricuspid regurgitation or arrhythmias, this is impossible to do by transcatheter. So the standard surgical implant is still the most frequent reoperation. But uh, we have other option. Yes, we have another option that is uh, a valve that is between the biological valve and the stented valve. It's exactly in the middle. It's a valve made by, like uh, a biological valve, by porcine uh, uh, cusps, uh, like a biological valve, but inside an expandable stent. This is the biointegral non react injectable valve. It's a valve that is, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, deplaced uh, by surgically, so that need uh, a surgical, uh, we have to open the chest. And uh, we, we can inject this valve through the right ventricle directly in the pulmonary artery. The size of this valve. Uh, uh, range from 15 to 31. So we have in the, on the shelf all the sides of this valve uh, for any, any age, any kind of uh, um, sides of the pulmonary aflow tract. And uh, this valve can be placed, uh, the most frequent uh, system is transventricular in sternotomy then uh, can be placed transventricular in thoracotomy or transventricular with a minimal incision uh, subsiphoid with beating heart and uh, transpulmonary in mini thoracotomy through the uh, upper thoracotomy. So there are several uh, um, way to implant this valve. I said that the most frequent is uh, transventricular sternotomy. This valve is very easy to implant because uh, um, in five minutes uh, the valve is depleted. Um, the, so in this way, the, the operative time is reduced. There is the possibility of put this valve without cardiopulmonary bypass, and I show you how. And uh, this valve is a valve without a stent because in, it's in, it's a, without uh, the the rim of a suture that have the other valve. So it's inside the stent, like a valve uh, percutaneous. So this uh, 
uh, is a valve open eventually for the future for uh, the possible valve in valve procedure. This is the valve inside the stent. This is the um, uh, injectable inject, injected system. This is how the valve uh, is expanded. The stent is, is a nitinol, it's um, a metal that uh, is very sensitive to the temperature and uh, permit uh, the expand that the valve expand in the in the right uh, size. The valve is inserted inside the, this uh, trocar. It's a 15 millimeter trocar. And uh, now we can see the images uh, in in direct. So we do an incision in the right ventricular flow tract, just where there is the transanular patch. We inject the valve in the right ventricular flow tract, filling from outside with finger where the valve is depleted. And this is the real time that needed this valve to be implanted in the right ventricular flow tract. So when the valve is expanded, the trocar is removed. And the valve is inside in the beating heart. And now we fix, of course, I use Peter Sutcher to do this. <laughs> we fix the valve from outside to, uh, to avoid the eventually embolization of the valve. And this is the echo, uh, intraoperative echo of this valve. In uh, our experience between uh, 2007 and 2019, uh, I implanted the, like a proctor this valve uh, in uh, 85 patients in 18 different centers, uh, uh, mainly in uh, Europe. And uh, uh, the diagnosis was uh, in the 70% of the trilogy for low. Uh, the other cases were pulmonary atresia or uh, pulmonary mm, stenosis that had the previous valvulotomy. And the main age of this patient uh, ranged uh, was uh, 26 years uh, uh, with a range of uh, 16.6 years. All this patient underwent a pre and post operative echocardiogram and uh, the majority of this patient had a cardiac magnetic resonance pre and post uh, the operation. Uh, like you can see, 25% uh, of the patients were implanted uh, in a beating heart, so half pump. The mortality rate was two, but uh, not related uh, with, uh, with uh, the, um, the valve, uh, where two patients uh, with uh, very poor right ventricular function. In this patient, uh, any valve you can put, but the, if their ventricular function doesn't recover, uh, uh, the risk of mortality is, is pretty high. Uh, the hospital stay was uh, very short. Uh, normally, a mean hospital stay was 10 days. Uh, normally, they stay one week. Post-op complication uh, was uh, minor uh, regarding uh, the valve, it was complication related more to the um, condition of the patient. And uh, I have a follow-up uh, with a mean of 4.9 years. The first implant was done 12 years ago. And uh, I, I never removed any valve uh, until now. As you can see, um, the ventricle, right ventricle function uh, was, uh, was uh, remodeled after the, the, the implant. You, we can see the parameters that we 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 took in right ventricular and diastolic volume decrease, uh, uh, and all these parameters are uh, significant, and uh, ejection fraction increase, uh, right ventricular and diastolic uh, diameters, uh, volume and uh, and uh, length decrease, and uh, the pulmonary. Uh, uh, pulmonary pressure of the right ventricle, uh, pre-implant, post-implant decrease uh, uh, gradually with the mean gradient uh, uh, 
pressure between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery of uh, 25.6. This is an intraoperative echo after the implant of the valve. You can see the movement of the cusps and the absence of the regurgitation. This was a um, trans epicardial echo in the operatory room to see um, how the valve is displaced inside the heart. This was a follow up echo after uh, three months. This is uh, another post-operative echo of another patient. The valves have the, some interesting characteristic by echo. Look, uh, looks, uh, because you can see the, the stent, you know, it looks uh, uh, box square in the right ventricular flow tract. The length of this valve is about uh, 50 millimeters. So this valve can be the place uh, close to the original valve or close to bi bifurcation, depending on how, how long is the, the main pulmonary artery. And this is a magnetic resonance of a patient with uh, uh, tetralogy of a law. We can see here, this is a pre-operative uh, pre -operative, uh, study with uh, free regurgitation of the pulmonary artery. And this is the post-operative study with the valve cusp movement and without any regurgitation. This is a study done in the, in the same patient before and after three months of the implant. You can see the changing on the diastolic volume. In, in white, the curve is the left ventricle uh, volume in the volume and the time, left ventricle volume in the white, and uh, uh, in the red, the right ventricle. You can see also that uh, after three months, uh, also the synchrony between the two ventricles is, uh, is, uh, is better because you can see the curve here are very overlapping. Here the curve are less overlapping. It does mean that the synchrony is much better. And also uh, you can see here the volume after the operation decrease in a significant uh, grade. So the injectable valve advantage, advantages, good durability. So the first implant was done 12 years ago. We have all the measure, measure on the shelf, it's easy to implant no need anticoagulation at least the first three months. Less risk of external compression because the stent is not very rigid, but uh, have some, uh, um, uh, some uh, rigidity that uh, can uh, compare with the compression outside. No cause coronary compression that uh, is more common in the percutaneous uh, um, valve like uh, the Edward Sapiens that have a stent very rigid that can cause a coronary compression. And it's a good candidate for valve in valve procedure. And uh, regarding disadvantages, we have to see also that, of course, you need more follow up because it's a pretty new valve. Uh, 12 years uh, still are not, uh, of course, uh, the number of years that uh, we looking for to to say that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good valve. And uh, this valve is not applicable to all the patients. So we have to select the patient that uh, are better um, uh, ideal for uh, this valve. So uh, we have to think that when we do a surgery of the right ventricular tract, we have to prepare the road for the future. This does mean that we have to change stunting in the two moments of the surgery of this patient, at first repair and then at the reoperation. How we can do that? So at the first repair, now we start to reduce the, the, the size of the transannular patch 
because we saw with experience that the big Tanzanian patch also if are well tolerated at the beginning normally become uh, aneurysmatic, uh, non, non, doesn't have contraction, so uh, are not useful. We you will use expandable conduits. This is important because now there are some uh, special gorillas conduit that can be expanded with a balloon. And this is useful when we use conduits. Expandable valve, of course, uh, um, we cannot use in the first repair, but um, if, if we do a first repair in a patient a little bit uh, older, we can use expandable valve of course, of course. And we have to think to the to the valve sparing procedure in the fallow. So if we try um, to, fix, to fix the valve, to leave the original valve, if it's possible, of course. And uh, when uh, we have, we can do something for the future in the reoperation. So we have to choose the best valve on, or conduit for that kind of patient. And we have to treat before all the associated anomalies to avoid that the patient re, uh, re come back at surgery with some uh, residual defect. And to have to choose that uh, we can use valve in valve procedures to so decide that we, we can use uh, um, valve that can be uh, prone or adapt to to accept this kind of procedure. In conclusion, tetralogy of allow is the most frequent causa of the right ventricular uh, dysfunction. Uh, this is uh, um, for the pulmonary regurgitation when we put a transanoral patch, uh, 25 of the patient, they need the reoperation in 15, 20 years. The surgical history of this patient uh, changed by introduction of the transcutaneous approach, of course. But despite the recent introduction of the transcutaneous implant, uh, the valve uh, replacement, the surgical valve replacement is still the most frequent uh, reoperation. And then uh, the surgical approach, especially in the first operation, uh, we, we have to think uh, to the future because uh, we have to avoid multiple reoperation and uh, we have to think uh, also to, uh, to, to do the best uh, uh, operation starting from the first approach. The ideal valve substitute uh, probably is still unknown, but we did a lot of pro progress in this, uh, in this year, especially with the expandable uh, valves new technologies, new valve, a new approach uh, in the, for the tetralogy of our law sh should be for sure the future step in the future. Thank you very much. Dr. Su, any question for me? Yeah, congratulations. You did a good job. Thank you. Yeah. The pathology of fallout are very popular in the congenital heart disease. Every year I operated uh, almost uh, 300. But uh, one of third uh, will the over some copper. Over. Yeah, one of the third transannual. But uh, now in China, there are many of these people for the pulmonary valve uh, region now. So you provide a good idea for the transannual for the rejectable valve replacement. Now in China, I combined with the company to Use the cast or to open the heart to open heart uh, through the right 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 ventricle out outflow to replace the power valve 
this is just for the uh, practice in, cl in clinical. Uh, uh, I want to know how, how, how many cases uh, you did in your group for the, for the trans, uh, trans annual every year. Okay, I, I did. I did uh, much less uh, tetragio for law than you, of course, but uh, in my experience, uh, uh, in uh, one hundred tetralogy of law, uh, also about uh, forty percent are uh, transannular patch, and uh, my experience uh, changed in the time. Uh, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of my experience, uh, I I did the more transannular patch. Now I try to avoid as uh, much as possible the transannular patch. Uh, when it's possible, I use uh, a patch with the monocosp valve that uh, is very useful for the first period, uh, first post-operative period. And uh, of course, in the time, it's not useful, but uh, uh, this avoid uh, to put the valve, of course, in a small uh, child that uh, is not useful and uh, permitted the child grows very well, and uh, the the insufficiency, the insufficiency is well well tolerated in the in the first years of life. Oh, thank you. Professor Su, do you have some uh, other question? Uh, we have uh, some question from the attendees. Okay. We cannot hear you. And uh, hi, uh, Dr. Stefano. I prepared uh, two questions and I want to ask you. The first one is could, could you speak in front of the mic? Because uh, we don't hear you when you don't when you are not close to the mic. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, it's better. Okay, the so first question is, Italy has been one of the, one of the uh, countries most severely uh, affected by COVID-19 this year. The Italy government was first to introduce quarantine measures quickly and uh, all elective uh, hospitals, I mean the healthy services were stopped or passed on. So uh, how does your center manage uh, patients who need time-limited surgery. If, if I understand well, you asking me um, how we can, why, how, how in Italy, how we um, resolve the problem uh, of the, um, of the cardiac, pediatric cardiac surgery in uh, in um, in this period uh, with the covid uh, covid uh, um, uh, pandemic no and understand uh, yes i, I, I mean so how does your center manage patients uh, how does your center manage patients who are need who need limited a time limited surgery in this uh, serious period okay uh, in the first uh, three, three months of the lockdown, uh, so starting from March to May, uh, we, we had 70% uh, less patient uh, uh, to operate in my center because May was a COVID center. And uh, I operate my child in, in, in a hub center that the Lombardy region um, decide uh, to live free from COVID. And then I went there to, to did the operation. Uh, also in the, in this two months, in the last two months, uh, I, I had the same problem. So 70% in less patient in my hospital. So I did only emergency case. So the case that I cannot transfer or, uh, or uh, move in another hospital uh, and the transplant, of course, that uh, my hospital is a transplant hospital. So I did the transplant and the emergency case and the rest of the patient, uh, I, I have to operate in another hospital. Uh, we fortunately, we have uh, here in the area, uh, three hospitals and uh, when the, we 
do we can do this kind of subject. Okay, okay, thank you, uh, thank you for the answer. And then another question, uh, could, you uh, could you share some skills about the operation in detail during second uh, serocotonomy that uh, requires replacement of conduit? If I have some, sorry, scar, scars. Uh, uh, can you share me some skills? You speak on the mic. Yes. So, can you hear me now? Yes. Some skills and the replacement conduit. Uh, yeah, yes. I, I mean, I want to. I want to you share me some uh, some skills about your operation in detail during the second thoracotomy that requires uh, replacement of conduits. Oh yes, um, when I have to replace a conduit, I I I divide my patient in um, in different categories. the the young The young patient, so starting from one to ten years, uh, I will use uh, uh, normally a Contegra like uh, the one that I use, uh, Doctor Sue. For the, the oldest patient, I will use uh, um, uh, conduit, uh, Dacron conduit with a biological valve inside, like uh, the Edwards or Carpentier Edwards or uh, Hancock conduit. So if I have to change a conduit, I, I use these two kinds of conduit. But I try to avoid as much as possible to use a conduit. Sometimes I I, I create a roof of pericardium and then I insert uh, an injectable valve in, inside. So I create uh, a conduit with pericardium outside and uh, this kind of valve that uh, you saw in the presentation, the injectable inside. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Professor Su and, uh, and your colleague. I have also uh, some questions from the field. Uh, we, we stay on the injecta injectable valve. Uh, one question for Navy from uh, Indonesia. What kind of patient um, that you consider to went uh, injectable valve replacement of BV? And is there any contra contradiction? Uh, I already talking about that. Uh, mm -hmm. This uh, valve need to be uh, the patient of, for this valve need to be selected. So the majority of these patients are tetralogy of low with transannular patch, but any patient with uh, mm, regurgitation, I, I will see of the pulmonary I, of the pulmonary valve can be ideal for uh, this valve. It's important to have. Uh, a, a good tran, uh, main pulmonary artery so adapt for this valve and for this reason any patient of my series had uh, the, the magnetic resonance images or cardiac catheterization so we have to choose before the valve for the right patient okay thank you and uh, another question, uh, a little bit different, that uh, uh, people would like to know uh, from uh, for, uh, Dr. Marneski and also Professor Su, uh, your experience with the uh, Sung technique. Sung technique. Sorry, the Sung technique in our center for the adult uh, cardiac surgery. I'm a congenital heart. Uh, they did the surgery. I'm not familiar with that technique. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't use uh, too much this kind of technique. Okay. Uh, and two last questions because time is running. And also, thank you, all of the attendees, to stay on, on, over, over timing. Uh, from your perspective, Dr. Marineski, uh, what is the most critical age for the operation for TOE, TOF? Critical age? Yeah. Um, is, there is not a critical age. It depends uh, uh, of the condition of the patient. I showed in the slides 
the 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 situation that we're looking for. So, how, uh, if the patient is symptomatic, if the regurgitation of the pulmonary valve uh, increases the diameter of the right ventricle, the volume of the right ventricle. So, I looking for the index at the volume of the right ventricle must be more than 140 to give indication to put this valve. And uh, the, the critical age uh, normally is between uh, 15 to 20 years after the repair with the transanular patch. Okay, thank you. And the last question is, um, have you any experience of the, the use of the three cups pulmonary valve perform with the thin, you know, EPTFM membrane with a vascular tube. I, I read about this valve, but I never reused. Okay. So I think that uh, we cover a lot. Professor, yes, do you want we, to say something? We, we, we find the... Uh... Some other center use the PDF3 cups just suitable by themselves, uh, depending on the size of the kids. But I never use that. I just uh, use the Bowen regular contact for that. Okay, it gives some complete answer. Uh, so I think that now we are arrive at the end of this uh, webinar. And uh, I would have on the behalf of Peter Surgical and on the behalf of all of the attendees, uh, thanks uh, all of you, uh, Professor Su, uh, to accept to uh, organize uh, this uh, dedicated webinar and Dr. Marineski to have prepared also the expertise of Europe. It gives uh, a new opportunity to be in contact with uh, all of the participants. Uh, more than 1,000 participants were connected live. So I think that you should be proud of that. And uh, this is the first uh, webinar, and some uh, other cardiopediatric webinar will be running. Uh, uh, but the first uh, first step is quite quite important. So thank you again, and if you have some last word, uh, it will be please. Oh, thank you to Peter to organize uh, this interesting uh, webinar. Um, of course, uh, I'm sure I organize. Uh, more in the future and um, I'm glad to be here to uh, was my uh, your uh, guest for this uh, webinar thank you Dr. Sutu thank you thank you everyone so I'm very happy to take the part of this uh, meeting and uh, just like uh, Peter just said uh, close to heart so in this special period, we also close to heart. Thank you, everyone. So, <laughs> thank you. This is the end of this webinar. You will have the replay, and I wish all of you a very good end of day. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.